Hello, hello, and a happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you are all having an amazing start to your week. We are so, so excited to welcome you to today's webinar with Front and Air Call. I know that we have a number of people who have signed up for today, so we'll just go ahead and give them a moment to get settled. So for those of you who are already settled, feel free to, to grab that, that last cup of coffee for your morning. And for those of you who are, are ready to get going, we are so excited to have you. I would love to learn a little bit more about all of you. So if you could all navigate to the chat section, feel free to, to introduce yourself, tell us where you are tuning in from, as we would love to, to know where around Europe we, we have some of our audience. Oh, wonderful. It looks like Adam is based in the, the UK. So for those of you, you can find the chat kind of on the, the bottom right-hand section. Feel free to, to just share a little bit about yourself there, and we'll go ahead and get started in, in just a minute. Katie, welcome, welcome. And I know I am in, based in, in Paris, here in France with, with our front European headquarter office just here. We are still in the, the hybrid, some office time, some work from home time as, as we slowly open the office more and more. Luis, welcome. Jerome, welcome. Well, I know we'll have a few more folks trickle in, but I do want to make sure that we're able to cover everything in our topic today. So what we'll actually be talking about is how we can turn every conversation into an amazing or great experience with Front and Air Call. Our agenda for today is first, why CX is the pulse of every business. Now, if you hear me refer to CX, all I mean is customer experience. So just shortening that a little bit. Next, we'll talk about what those common CX challenges are for many businesses today. Third, we'll actually dive in to how both Front and Aircall actually empower teams to drive customer loyalty and solve many of those challenges that we'll present. And lastly, we'll make sure to actually leave the last few minutes for questions. So we'll have about 10 minutes at the end for questions, but please, 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 as you have any questions that pop up in your head throughout, you'll actually see a question section right on the right-hand side in this webinar platform. Feel free to ask it there, and we will make sure to address it at the end. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. And first, would love to do some quick introductions. So as I mentioned, my name is Matthew. I am based in Paris, working with the front team, and I actually help direct our global customer success programs. And I am joined by the incredible Andre from Aircall, but I'll actually turn it over to him and have him introduce himself to all of you. Thank you, Matthew, and, and welcome, everyone. I'm very happy to be there and having this, uh, this chat about CX. Just a few words about myself. So I'm Andre, and I lead the uh, sales team at Aircall. And uh, I was also there when we were more, well, more or less 10 employees. So that's, uh, that's nearly five years ago. We're now nearly 500 employees. So in other words, I was there when I was still able to know basically each each and every one of the names of our customers uh, when I joined, and uh, and I and I can say today I know the names of our uh, of our, all of our customers, but I have to say that um, well, having a strong CX strategy throughout the whole of the of the whole Aircall journey and the whole last five years for our customers has been a key priority, and that I'm looking forward to this chat as there's a lot to talk about. Well, Andre, welcome. We are so excited to have you. And for those of you who, who have some questions, you have some great brains to pick to, to really talk about how to scale that CX experience, going from just a few team members to, to being very international with hundreds of employees and hundreds more customers that I'm sure, Andre, you're, you're having to deal with on a regular basis. So before we, we really dive into to both Andre or myself talking, we would love to hear from all of you. And we actually wanted to start this off with a quick question as to how you would define customer experience. And if all of you actually go to the right-hand side of, of your screen, you'll see a section called polls. We would love for you to just take a moment, go ahead and answer that poll as to how you would define customer experience. 
So it's just the, the poll at the top. There are three section or three answers there. Go ahead and click one, submit your votes, and we'll talk about it in just a second. This is going to be a, a very interactive <laughs> webinar if you can't tell already, but we wanna make sure that, that we're hearing from all of you as well. All right, so it looks like we're, we're getting some responses in, and it looks like the, the majority of, of all of you are saying that CX is the impression your customers have of your brand as a whole throughout all aspects of the buyer's journey. Now, we wanted to, to pause here because we know that, that customer experience, CX, is kind of a, a hot topic in the, the world of business today. Many different businesses define it in, in unique ways as it relates to their own business. Thinking about what teams are responsible for, for CX, who needs to manage that, who needs to actually think about that customer experience. But really, we wanted to pause and take a moment and share a little bit about how Front and Aircall think about customer experience. Really being how customers perceive their interactions with your company. And I like to focus on, on two words specifically there. Perceive and interactions. When we think about that perception of, of your customers, it doesn't matter how you treat them. It doesn't matter how you think that you're treating them. At the end of the day, what your customers feel, what they perceive, that perception becomes the reality of their experience. So if they walk away from an interaction and they're feeling their needs weren't met, they will associate that, those negative feelings, with your whole organization. When we think about interactions, we also are not just referring to, to human interactions. And as many of you, you voted here in the poll, it's really all of those interactions across the whole buyer's journey. So whether you are looking at a website or you're dealing with a bot in, in website chat, maybe your marketing efforts who are reaching out to those customers in some of those drip emails, all of those are interactions that define customer experience. And Andre, I just want to turn it over to you to see if there's anything you would like to add here. No, I think you've put it right, and I uh, I think I voted with the with the majority uh, to this poll. And it's uh, it's it's funny sometimes how uh, in business you'll want to simplify things, and it's uh, I mean CX sounds so nice to hear about, and you CX just has customer experience, and sometimes that's 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 where it's easy to start forgetting about the prospects, and that's where it's easy to start forgetting about how customer experience, as you just said, Matthew, starts with the actual experience of the prospect browsing on your website, getting a first level of information, then reaching out potentially to your sales team and having a first interaction with your sales team. And at this stage, they're not only, they're not, they're not already customers, but already the customer experience has started. And, uh, and that's something that, uh, that I think that, uh, that a lot of companies sometimes forget. Of course, then CX is, is there's a lot around the, the whole customer support and customer success parts, but, uh, but the first part is often a, a big one and the whole transition between one stage to another is huge. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll touch base on this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And, and really, I mean, when, when we think about customer experience, I, I, we wanted to share some of the, the points of why it's so important. Why it's so important to have an amazing customer experience. Because ultimately, when we think about our consumers, they are going to have that loyalty to continue to come back to us if we are able to deliver on that amazing experience. For example, 74% of consumers are likely to buy just based on their experiences alone. And as Andre mentioned, really those experiences start at the very beginning of that process. So being able to deliver that incredible experience even to prospects can help with that buying process. We also know that CX drives over two thirds of consumer loyalty, more than, than brand or price. So if you are able to provide that amazing experience, you will have more loyal customers year over year. And for many of you who might be in the SaaS industry, every time you have that renewal, you have that loyalty as well. But we also like to, to point out that having amazing CX or, or giving your customers an amazing experience is actually going to allow them to have a positive recommendation of your product, of your service. So 71% of people recommend a product or service because they receive a great experience. And I, I wanna pause there for just a moment because when we think about that customer loyalty and that positive word of mouth, 
Ultimately, what that means for you is that you have revenue growth with zero acquisition cost because your customers are speaking on your behalf. So when we think about a recipe for great customer experience, we really like to break it down into five different categories. Personalization, availability, consistency, speed, and effortless. And what we mean by each of these, first with personalization, are you able to actually deliver a personalized experience to your customers. They don't feel as if they are just answering to some bot. They actually feel like a human being and they're able to reach the business, connect with your team, with your company on the other end. Is your company available? What we mean here is, are you available in any way that the customer is trying to reach you? Whether it is phone, email, website chat, any of these different omni channels that customers are trying to reach you, do you have the ability to provide that experience on that channel? Third, consistency. Is your team consistently providing that amazing experience so your, your customers don't have to, to come in and whether it's a different answer they're getting or a different experience based on the channel, based on the day, maybe based on the agent that they're interacting with, are you able to consistently deliver time and time again that incredible experience? Third is, or fourth, excuse me, is speed. Are you actually able to respond quickly to your consumers, to your clients? And just a quick point here, I think 90% of, of individuals expect an immediate response to any of their support questions or to any of their chat questions when they're writing into a business. I know that, that I often feel that way, is when I'm, I'm messaging a, a business, I want a very quick response. Are you able to deliver that today to have that recipe for a great customer experience? And last is effortless. What we mean here is we, are you making it effortless for your customers to interact with you? That they do not feel like they have to lift a finger to have that incredible experience, to go through your buying process, to get the support for the questions that they might have. And so next we'll actually turn it to another quick poll here. And I'll be curious what, what some of you say here, but if you actually look in the poll, it's just the second one down. Do you think that you're currently delivering a perfect customer experience? All right, we see some votes coming in. And I'll just give everyone a, a quick second here to, to go ahead and vote in the poll. But again, do you think that you're currently delivering a perfect customer experience? All right, so we actually have about 90% uh, of the audience saying no, about 10% saying yes. So, so for those of you who actually said, said yes, I would be curious to, to pick your brain and learn a little bit more in the Q&A at the end. But, but for most of you who said no, I'm curious, what's holding you back from offering great customer experiences? Now that it's very top of mind, feel free to just type in the chat and, and let us know. What are some of those examples that, that you've encountered this week or, or when you were thinking about clicking that no that you actually saw or thought of that this is a challenge we have. This is, is one of those five areas in that recipe for success that we're currently not meeting. Great, I, I see some, some people typing in the chat here, so we'll just give everyone a moment. It seems like there's a, a, having that seamless journey between different tools can be quite difficult. Okay. Effortless is, is hard to achieve. I can, can definitely empathize with that one. Inconsistency between teams, not being able to have that, that consistent positive experience from, from one organization to another. And, and again, effortless seems to be coming up Again and again, there are always ways we can improve ourselves. For an example, onboarding of, of our customers. Okay. And so, so now that you've started to list some of these challenges, 
they actually reflect some of the, the most common challenges that we have when trying to, to find that recipe within our business for the perfect CX experience or that incredible CX experience. So some of the challenges that we will actually talk about today are these four. First, mastering the omni-channel experience. Second, personalization at scale. Third, and I think somebody wrote this down in the, the chat, the breakdown of organizational and technology silos. So having information siloed between different tools or different parts of an organization. And then fourth is understanding where your CX actually falls short. So do we have all of the information to actually make decisions or reflect back to look at what we need to change to have that perfect recipe or that, that incredible CX experience? So now that we, we've talked about those four, we would love to actually kind of move into more of the, the collaboration component. Really, Andre, get ready. I'm going to start picking your brain on some of these topics because what we want to start talking about is how front and air call as tools in your technology stack actually make all of these challenges a thing of the past. So we'll go ahead and start with the first one, mastering the omni-channel experience. And so, so I will actually walk through a bunch of these. For some of you, you might see a little smiley face just at the bottom, right below my video. Feel free, if any of these start to resonate with you, you can kind of give a, a thumbs up and say, yes, my team has experienced some of these challenges before. But really, in that before scenario, how many of you, when thinking about that omni-channel experience, and especially for those of you who have typed in the chat, there's this constant juggle between channels, whether you have multiple phone lines that, that people are calling, whether you have phone and email and chat, and your clients and customers are trying to reach out to all of these. Another before scenario is having that lack of accountability, actually understanding who is responsible for handling these messages, these phone calls across the various different channels. Are they based on individuals? Does a team need to actually handle this certain type of channel? And the third is really high friction to find customer context. So when you are offering many channels, do you and your business understand, do you know, did that customer call us two days ago? Did they actually just email us two minutes ago? Do you have all of that context across that customer's journey with your business to be able to, to provide that experience. And oftentimes, many, many teams fall short of this and they don't have that customer context. So now, with front and air call, we would love to actually share a little bit of how you can have what we call the after scenario and solve for some of these major challenges when it relates to the omni-channel experience. But I would love to, to turn it over to Andre. And Andre, if you could actually just share with us how these businesses, how teams can actually leverage Aircall to make sure that they are able to have a better omni-channel experience for that, that overall CX experience they're providing. Sure, hundred percent. And I think I mean it's not only it's not only air call, and it's um, and of course, um, well, it's mainly also front and I mean, sometimes even other softwares um, on top that will allow you to actually master this this omni-channel experience. And the the first thing that comes to mind when I when I hear this is there is actually no way of knowing what is the preferred channel for your actual persona that you're selling to. Or that, or the actual user that you are, um, that is part of your customer base. The reality is that you can guess, you can imagine that if you're B two B or if you're in your, if you're in B two C, that most will prefer maybe chatting, calling you, emailing you, opening a ticket. But the reality is that there are so many different personalities, and even in B two B today behind B2B is B2B2C sometimes, and you end up with personalities that actually will prefer something. So if you are really wanting to really deliver the top-notch customer experience, in some way, you have to open yourself to all channels. And the idea here, of course, is not to overload your team. It's not, you've got, you've got different teams, whether it be in sales, whether it be in support, whether it be in onboarding. And I know that the more channels you add, the more complexity you add. So this is where, in an ideal world, the, every time you add a channel, the first thing you think about is integrations. Can 
each indifferent channel be added through a good proper integration to the existing core system that you are using to actually handle all your communications. And that's where I believe that Aircall, to come back to Aircall, and where we really value, of course, the, the voice channel, but also the messaging channel, the SMS channel. We wanted to make those moments, moments that, was, that were immediately be, could be handled from within the core system that you're using. And here it's front that you can use to have kind of like a an overview of all your customers. We wanted, of course, a real ownership of every of every of every message. That means that when you receive, maybe you've started a call, you've uh, you've actually received an incoming call, and then you're following up maybe with a message because actually your your prospect has told you or your customer has told you that he would prefer to receive a customer uh, as an SMS, sorry, as an update to his um, ticket that he opened or to his request that he actually uh, referred to. Well, then you want this message to be clearly owned. If you are going on a if you are going on a break, you maybe want to assign this message um, to another rep who can be there as your backup. If you know you're going to be out for a specific meeting for the afternoon, so you want to be sure that when there's going to be follow up on this, there's going to be somebody on top of it. And this is the visibility that we're talking about. That's that's about being sure that if, if you're part of a team, even within a customer support team, there are different teams. We all know it. There is sometimes different teams related to how complex the request is. And you want to have visibility across all boards. You want to have backups, which are kind of like natural. Otherwise, it becomes way more way too complex. And that's what I believe today the experience of front and air call is able to offer through the interface and the way it was built. Yeah, thank, thank you for that, Andre. And it, it's funny you, you bring up that we're never able to predict how our customers want to, to reach out to us. I, I have a just a very funny story. I used to work with a client who, who was in the US and their customers actually preferred mail like mailing in a letter as a method of communication. And, and this business found that to be one of their, their biggest challenges was how do you actually kind of switch their customer base so that they can be using email or phone call a bit more so that they're able to, to have faster response times. So I think you're totally right in that aspect that it, it's difficult to predict. And, and at the end of the day, I think what, what we need to do is just make sure that we are able to have any method of communication that the customer wants to reach us, that is available for them. But as you mentioned, the more channels we have, the more difficult it can become. So centering this all in a system, uh, for example, centering it all in front, knowing that, that we can see, did this person call our air call line 10 minutes ago? And now we're going to follow up with a message to say, here's the, the SMS that we're gonna send you, here's the email that we'll follow up with. And just being able to see that visibility allows you to move faster. And, and really, I think that's that's a big part of how, how having, having air call in this unified system is going to allow you to master that omnichannel experience. I'm waiting for the actual integration with mail that, that could come one day. I don't, I don't know how, but uh, if you can end up integrating mail and front, that would be uh, that would be just uh, the next level. I, I do have to say I, I am new to the country of France. I still have yet to figure out the, the mailing system here. So I'm fine to, to just keep it all online for now. <laughs> so the, the next challenge that we want to talk about is that personalization at scale. So I would be curious, again, feel free to react with those emojis just below. How many of you have actually experienced this, whether at your current company or in previous companies, where your customers have felt like a ticket number? They, they receive a message, or, or maybe you even actually experienced this personally. You receive a message, it says reply above this line, you are number one, two, three, four, five. I, I see some, some cry emojis uh, popping up. How many of you have also had to make a choice between speed or personalization? You just have so much volume that you actually have to just get through it so quickly that you're not able to have that personalized message or, or that personalized context for that customer and client. Also, in this before scenario, what many teams struggle with is that customers have to wait or they have to repeat themselves over and over again. So really, if they're chatting with, with say, a, a bot of some sort, having to, to switch over to a, a real individual, you're losing that context. And so that customer then feels like they're having to tell their story all over again when they, they think or they perceive 
as we relate back to that definition earlier, they perceive that, that you're not listening, your business is not understanding what I'm trying to tell you because I have to tell you over and over again. So now, in this after scenario, once you've implemented Front, once you have Air Call, some of the things that you are able to do is treat customers like people and not like ticket numbers. You can automate a lot of that tedious work or, or really that manual work to prioritize that high touch outreach and even have context at your fingertips to adapt your messaging. So, so I think one example that I would like to share with Front is thinking about some of that automation. So one thing that you are able to do in Front is build a number of complex rules to actually automate everything that, that you have been doing that is very manual, that doesn't necessarily need that personalization. So you no longer have to choose between that, that speed or that personalization. You can tell Front, I need you to do this, this, and this for me. That way I can focus on having these personalized conversations to deliver that incredible customer experience. But Andre, I would love to, to hear a little bit about how you, how Aircall is actually helping customers and, and maybe even some folks here in the audience with providing that personalization at scale. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll stick on the same point as yours on, on automating the, the tedious work. I mean, there's, um, there's, al there's always information that uh, sometimes at the management or even leadership side of the, le of the company that we need uh, in order to, to track uh, our customer interaction. And then there is really like the actual experience during the call and how do we make the life of the actual agent um, or rep as easy as possible. And if I think of um, of an actual phone call and what what happens at the moment of a of a phone call when you receive this incoming call, of course you want I mean as a, as a company you want to know the exact maybe day the exact time the who uh, within the company called you um, on this point so all those all those different data points that's a lot of information and so here I mean basic stuff of our integration, of course, with, with Front will be, of course, to log this call with this information. But the real value, and here what we talk about the high touch outreach, the, the real, what we're giving to the agent is time to focus on what counts the most. And this is maybe taking notes on the few, maybe on the impressions, on the first feedbacks given by the customer, on what will make the difference in the next touch. Keep it, taking notes of what will be helpful for the customers, what seems to be the most important for him. And then not focus on, have I actually logged this call? Have I actually said if this call was a call which is interested in so on so on? You should rely on tech here to actually simplify life on your end to just follow the flow here. Another example I like to give is in my own in my own personal life, every time I'm the kind of person every time we call the customer support line, I kind of rank customer my customer experience on two sides. The people who welcome me with hi Andre, how can I help you today? And the ones who called me uh, and who welcome me by Hi, how can I help you? Can you give me your first name, um, ticket number, or, and so on? Yeah. The the whole the whole point here is and I mean, I, of course, there needs to be checks, and there can be checks made at some point. But there is nothing more than a customer agent. There's nothing better than a customer agent welcoming you by, "Hi, am I am I speaking to Andre?" And this just starts the whole conversation. Whatever the customer is calling for, an issue, a problem, a bug, whatever. This starts the conversation in such a different way. And this is here again, you can rely on tech. Here, uh, when if I bring it down to, to air call again, of course, we would display of course, in very, in very clear way in front of the agent, even before the agent actually answers the name of the customer, the company that it comes from, maybe if there's already an open ticket with this customer, and we will pop up on front the exact conversation that actually appears here, so that when the customer agent answers, he's not only saying, hi, am I speaking to Andre? He might only be, he might also be saying, am I, am I speaking to Andre? And are you, are you calling, referring to this last conversation that you opened yesterday? And I'm like, wow, I'm not going to have to repeat whatever I've said yesterday. And now, we, now we're talking. Let's enter and let's, let's troubleshoot. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think you, you said it a bit earlier. Just have it, giving that time back to agents, I also think, makes them a little bit happier when they're not doing this tedious work. And, and I think just having people who are enjoying their work more is also naturally going to lead to even more personalization in kind of a, a snowball effect. 
it's it's a it's a, it's a that's a that's a great point, and that's really one that I actually have, have pushed a lot. I believe that today, yeah, a great customer experience will come down to actually having uh, reps or agents who are actually sounding happy whenever they're interacting, and this can be and this can be heard, of course, through through call, voice calls when you're when you're talking to somebody in the tone of voice. But this can also be felt on a on a ticket email answer or even on a chat answer. You can see if your if your customer if your if your teams are happy, and sometimes just giving them the tools to actually whew, make this moment of a customer reaching out with a potential problem slightly less stressful does impact the whole customer experience. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Thank you for sharing. So our, our third kind of major challenge that I, I think we tend to see is that there is a breakdown of organizational and technology silos. And, and I know that somebody wrote this in the chat a little bit earlier uh, of a challenge that they're experiencing or why they're not able to provide that perfect customer experience. Really, in this before scenario, when we refer to this, what we mean is that there is this difficulty or in, sometimes inability to actually collaborate across departments. Maybe it is because we are now more remote than ever. Maybe it's between different offices. Or maybe it's you're all in the same office, but you just don't have these tools to collaborate together. But all of you need to interact to be able to service the customer. You might have slow cross-team workflows trying to go from sales to onboarding to success that every time that, that might be a little friction for your business. You might have forwarding, CCing, BCCing, transferring call confusion between the different teams. And I, I think, it, it, at least in the US, we play this game called telephone, where you, uh, you might be whispering to, to other people, but what tends to happen is all of that knowledge kind of stays a little bit with the previous person. It doesn't get transferred, and you have some of this lost or locked in every team's systems and tools that is able to move down the chain. Now, with Front and Aircall, you're actually able to break down these organizational silos, these technology silos, because what you're able to do is actually work together to reply to your customers faster. Every team can live inside these tools, and you can, as Andre mentioned, even integrate or think about those integrations so that you have one single interface for all of your applications. Now, now, personally, one of the things that I love the most about Front is that we are a horizontal product. So whether, uh, for those of you who are in the audience, if you're in sales, support, success, uh, I saw that somebody was a founder uh, of their company. Every team can use Front because all of you at the end of the day are communicating, whether it's directly with your customers and clients or whether you are interacting internally to make sure that you're able to provide that amazing customer experience. But Andre, we'd love to, to hear from you about air call and breaking down these silos. Yeah, I think if there's a if there's a common value that we also share with the with front is it's collaboration. And and this is what it comes down often when 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 handling any issue. It's there's there's there's, there's the easy issues, there's the easy, easy requests which will any person within the company will be able to troubleshoot themselves. And then there are all those other ones where it takes a village to actually um, troubleshoot and actually get an answer. And that's where some teams are actually able to, well, bring down this village within internally speaking, collaborate, ask around to the different teams to actually get the answers and then troubleshoot. And this is where, again, um, here, if I, if I think of a, of a very specific example, you receive an incoming call, you start troubleshooting, and then you realize that actually somebody else will be, will be better off uh, finishing this call here. So you're wanting to do a transfer. Uh, you're you're on this call, you're wanting to maybe to speak to the to the person internally that you're going to be transferring the call to. So you're going to be doing a warm transfer. You're going to be briefing this person. When you're going to be forwarding the call, this person is not going to be on, only receiving the call with the info you told him, but there's also going to be brought on the actual conversation page of the customer in front. This way, again, this is all context. This is all stuff to help the team who is collaborating and making the customer experience here optimal have the information they need. And that's, that's I think, a good example of here. One from whether it be a billing team with a sales team, uh, a customer support team level two, and a success team. All those teams, they end up working together on the slightly more complex requests, and they need to. 
Yeah, and, and I know somebody actually brought up onboarding a little bit earlier yep. in, in the chat. I, I think that that is another perfect example that I think many companies struggle between uh, how do you move a customer from prospect to get to their onboarding manager, then from their, their onboarding experience to that, that post sales, introduce them to their customer success manager, their account manager. So just being able to seamlessly have everyone inside the same thread, easily loop in those folks and not not uh, make it very easy for the customer to almost have this, this effortless experience where the whole business knows exactly what's happening in our conversations because they can all be looped in internally. I think it's important. 100%. And at the end, often what ends up is you've got a whole journey basically that happened where you can see the different touches of the different teams. And this is the kind of story that sometimes can also actually be brought to leadership. Um, I've actually seen so many decisions taken because an actual full thread of different interactions around a specific topic was forwarded and you have a call recording that you can listen into. You can have a, a, the few chats which, which happened following this, the SMS that was sent, the tickets that was then followed up on. And that gives an actual real tangible information that sometimes leadership needs to actually potentially change a strategic move agree on a next product uh, feature that we're going to prioritize or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I know we have one more challenge that, that we're going to talk about, which is understanding where your CX falls short. And I think that this is one that, that most people don't even realize is a challenge. It's kind of one of those, those ideas where you almost don't know what you don't know. Right? You don't have this ability to actually track because you're not leveraging analytics. So you don't have visibility into the volumes, the trends, your team workload, that performance. You're not actually able to track some of those response times. I know we talked a little bit earlier in that recipe for great success is having that speed. But if you don't have any of this information, you are actually missing out on being able to identify the pieces in the equation that you need to fix. So with front and air call, you're actually able to have access to analytics. So what you can start to do is get a holistic look at all of your communication. You can identify or even anticipate what are some of the trends that we had in the past. Maybe we know that, that this month we are going to experience a, a very high influx of calls. You can support and coach your team. You can actually start to look at who are our teammates who are really successful in their interactions, in their customer satisfaction scores that they're receiving, and who might need a little bit more help. And you can make those well-informed decisions to actually start to determine what does our next KPI or our, our OKR for success look like next quarter as we're building out this incredible experience. Andre, anything else that you would want to add here? No, I think it comes down, as you said, to the well-informed decisions. And how many times in, in different companies that I speak to, I, I hear the, the the argument of, yeah, but we don't have the data. Um, we, we don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, we our gut feeling is telling us this. And for me here, this comes down always to to integrations. I mean, uh, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be, adding another software if you, if you don't know that this software is going to be able to log the data that you're going to be needing to take informed decision in a proper way and that you'll be able to cross match with the other data of your tool. Let me take an example. If you want to know after opening a ticket, um, after a customer opens a ticket, how fast do your um, reps or agent actually call the agent? If you're the type of customer support team that wants to always call first, um, then that's the kind of data you'll be able to track. You'll be able to track date of ticket open in front compared to call log of this outgoing call made by your support rep. And this is just a simple um, simple, cal simple calculation here that our, your analytics will be able to show you and then make you take action on is there a team that actually performs better than another? Is there a rep that performs better than another? And, and so on for even actual data that corresponds to the actual uh, customers. I mean, if you want to know how, like what made this customer potential leave you a bad review somewhere, 
you want to go back here and look at how fast did you lead? Did you receive an answer? What was the SLA? Have, were we in SLA or not for this customer? All of those metrics, you should have them because your software should be integrated one another, other and therefore allow a powerful analytics uh, section to give this, those insights. Yeah, I, I think with, with these analytics, you can almost uh, even predict when you might have a, a bad review in the future because you'll start to know what are the, the different points. Was it a slow response time? Were there there's some keywords that came up in that conversation to, to almost see, did we provide that experience before they even go and write that review? Now, I know that, that both Andre and I have been doing a lot of talking about front end recall, but we don't just want you to take our word for it. We, we do have a few customer quotes. I won't spend so long here because I, I want to make sure that we have time for questions, but just some, some quotes to, to highlight. With front and air call, it's helped us streamline our processes and become more efficient as a department as we think about some of that effortlessness or that speed. That efficiency is actually impactful as it relates to having that speed of reply times, to having that, that effortless nature that customers don't actually experience, that they have to lift a finger for that, that amazing experience. When you connect air call and front together, you create your own tool that's perfectly built for what you do with the sharpest tool set for each function. So as we talked about organizational silos, that can tend to happen before being on front and air call. But now you can actually build out these tools to make sure that every team, everyone who is interacting with customers at your organization is perfectly suited to make sure to deliver that incredible experience. And I will actually just move to the last slide here and, and turn it over to any questions from all of you. But if you have questions that, that come up after this webinar, feel free to please, please, please send us an email. It's just sales at frontapp.com or sales at aircall.io. If you want to see more of the product that, that we've talking about as well, please feel free to send us a note. And we will actually be sending both a recording of this webinar to all of you, as well as an ebook you can see here, how to humanize customer experience using technology. So you can actually get some more of these insights that we were able to talk about today. And with that, thank you all so much for your participation and I'll turn it over to all of you for any questions. And I, I see actually a, a question in the, the chat right here. Do your teams internally use your tools? I suppose the proof is in the pudding. So it's, it's actually a very funny story. One of the things that I loved about Front when I was thinking about a new company is that everyone at Front uses Front. And even to this day, it is the first tool that you open that you log in. So whether you are in finance, whether you're a designer, you're an engineer, in sales support, every team uses Front. I think that this is, is actually very cool for a tech company because we actually get to, to have a taste of our own medicine, if you will. If something is working really well, we get to experience it. I think that's part of why our company culture is really great and very transparent because we get to use Front every day. Uh, but Andre, uh, what about you with, with using Aircall? I would assume yeah. maybe the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 100% agree, but it's not always the case. We do, and, and I'm super, honestly, I'm super proud of the, of the tech team for having, uh, let's say, um, well, followed our, our growth in some way, because sometimes uh, some tools can be more catered for a specific size of customers. And, and Aircall for us was great when we were 10 employees. We're now close to 500 employees, and it's still like, perfect for us we we basically we're we're having so much fun today on on each phone call and it's and it's just really the great fit and so but it doesn't always happen i mean you probably some of you might be aware hubspot was using salesforce for like uh, so many years as their crm it's like those 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 stories do exist and i believe that today each 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 software out there has a has a core icp has really a a set of customers that they're able to cater for the best and um and well airco we we ourselves are good for companies around 500 employees and we're still of course for smaller employee for smaller customers as we were before uh, so so i'm really again I'm, I'm, it's been it's been a good a good ride so far even for us yeah that that's great and, and i see another question here in the chat 
do you have some use cases to share from implementation to collecting the first ROI of your solutions? So, so Jerome, happy to, to give some examples now. We'll make sure to, to write down your, your email so that we can follow up with some use cases after as well. But, but I know at least up front, one of the things that, that we find really important is actually that, that analytics experience. So once a team is inside front, they start collecting some of this data. So I know that every business's customer journey is a little bit different, but at the end of that onboarding period, uh, so for front, we, we think about that as 90 days. Uh, of usually by that three month mark, all teams, regardless of their size, are probably up and running and onboarded. We like to have a conversation with them and show them their own data inside front to actually show them what they have been able to accomplish that they weren't able to even track or even have before because of the, the new capabilities um, that, that they're able to use. An example of this might be before their teams were operating in two different tools. Inside front, they can actually see how many different conversations moved between those different teams and how quickly they were now handled because both teams are living inside the same tool and they're breaking down that organizational silo. So, so just one, one example, but, but Andre, if you have any quick examples you would like to share with Jerome as well. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So we we look a lot of uh, we look at a lot of different things. We actually, when you when you start discussing with us, we're able to list you uh, depending on what you're going to be using, uh, different areas, different use cases where you're going to have a clear ROI. Um, and for this, we 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 look at: Are you making outgoing call? Are you a are you a type of team that is making a certain number of outgoing call throughout the day, um, throughout the the even the whole month? And we consider that. Thanks to one of our features, for instance, the click to dial, you're able to save a lot of time just for the click to dial. So this is, we estimate this to approximately uh, 20 to 25 seconds per, per click to dial. This is something that we've tested ourselves and with our customers. So here is an easy math here. You multiply the number of outgoing calls that you're making per the number of seconds saved. Another example that we discussed during this webinar was the call logs. The call logs, if you're expecting, because you want for tracking purposes, your team to actually log each call manually every time this happens, so leave a note, open, click on the different actions. We're estimating that it can be between one minute and one minute and 30 seconds time wasted doing this manual action. With the automatic call log of the integration of Aircall with Front, you have your call log which is logged and your agent is focusing on actually what he can do for the customer. And this time again can be saved per the number of call that you have. So there's lots of different examples like this that we always relate back to time saved. And then you, you decide what you make with this time. If your ROI is, I want to say that I'm going to save, save time because I'm then going to hire one, one customer agent less, so this is one headcount uh, less to do something else, then great. If your time is used for maybe going deeper, expecting your team to go deeper into the issues, then this is maybe the uh, what you're going to be recommending. So then you define the ultimate, let's say, output of your ROI. Yeah, and one of the, the things here, I, I always think that that time saved or, or just having that, even some of the, those faster times in interacting with customers to relate back to one of those earlier statistics in providing that great customer experience, they will start to recommend your business to their businesses that they know that could also benefit from your solution. So I think it has the, this larger ripple effect as well. And I know that, that we are, are just a bit over time, but, but please, 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 if you have any follow-up questions, always feel free to email sales at frontapp.com or sales at aircall.io. We would be more than happy to answer them to make sure that, that you are able to all provide a world, a best in-class uh, customer experience for all of your clients. And with that, we will we'll leave you to the rest of your Wednesdays and thank you so much for your time. Thank Bye, you everyone. all, and thank you, Matthew. Thank you.